Now, now this is interesting because I always thought these were like pistol balls. I found a number of these. These trade muskets would fire a 62. A 62. Uh, this is a 62. Okay. All right. In the well, it's loose. Yeah. Because a lot of the powder didn't burn back then. The powder wasn't the greatest stuff, and a lot of it didn't burn, so it would build up in the barrel. Back, you know, where you you're dumping all the powder in. Yep. So the ball was made smaller so that it wouldn't jam up and then the gun would explode on your face. Okay. You know, if the, if the barrel got clogged up. We're down digging these up. And, and one thing is I come across a lot of this, now, this size. This is, these are the trade guns. The French were trading these to the Indians. Okay. And this is 62, this one's a 62 caliber. They have made other calibers as well. That's when you're watching my videos and I show you these and I keep saying that these are pistol bullets, they're well, not they could pistol be. Well, they could be. They could be? It all depends on the caliber. Okay. But they could be pistol ball, yeah. Um, and you could you could fire a few of these out of... Oh, well, holy cow, of, there's one right there. Why didn't I see that? So they did have... Blunderbusses. Okay. Yeah, they had blunderbusses. Hey you guys, welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. We are on site and we are looking and searching for history here. The area that we're talking about was settled in the mid 1700s, so it's very old. Any artifacts that we find out of here should be old. In fact, everything that we have found on this site so far has been old. Now, the Aqua Trigger and I, we've hit this area pretty hard. And, uh, I don't suspect there's a lot of stuff left, but anything we find is going to be mid-1700s, and it's going to be old. All right, you guys, it's not brass, it's iron. It looks like a wagon hammer. I'll let you take a look. I could be completely wrong, but I have seen one of these before. And that is a wagon hammer. And this absolutely dates from the 1700s. I have another one just like this that I found at another 1700s site. And you can see how it's beveled right there. It's beveled right there. That's exactly what that is. That is a wagon hammer, and it's for the pin of a wagon. And uh, the other one I found like this, dated into the 1700s, and this has to have come from that time period. So I am real happy about that. I'm gonna clean this up. I am tickled to death over that. All right, you guys, I popped the plug. I'll let you guys hear it. I think it's another lead round ball. And I'm not gonna show you every lead round ball I pull out of here, but that's what I've been pulling out of here. Right there it is. Right there it is. That is another Pioneer lead round ball. You see that? So uh, I've got, a number of these things you'll see them at the end of the video and i'm in an area here the ford actually stood right here behind you guys so they were firing over this way the indians i take were probably coming down this way i thought they might have come down that hill right there you know and there might be some lead against that hillside there but i actually think they came from this direction right here and so the the settlers were firing this way and uh, as long as I'm finding these, I'm happy because I can date this. Because I knew when this battle took place. All right, let's keep going. All right, I just pulled it out and I see it. And this is the first horseshoe I have found. And no doubt in my mind, this is old. Is it 1700s old? It could be. 
I have a button. It is right there. Do you see it? Do you see it now? See that? All right, man, that is a great, great find. That's why you always want to come back to these sites. Once it's rained and it's snowed and everything gets settled back down in, you know, had we not come back, that would still be in the ground for who knows how long, maybe forever. But today we saved history. Let's keep going, see if we can't find more of these. All right, you guys, I popped the plug, pulled it out, and it's right in here somewhere. It is a mid-tone, reading a 12 to 13, which is typically lead or pewter. There it is. There it is. Okay, now see, there is a piece of melted lead that came from the fort. Probably a lead round ball that wedged itself in one of the upright logs, the palisade. And when it burned, this is where it landed. Saving history right here. I'll take melted lead all day long. I, this doesn't bother me one bit. I know it's old. I know it's mid 1700s. And we're saving history today. All right, you guys. Pop the plug and I got a bull... Uh, button but I want you to hear this because it's very very low and on uh, a mine lab pewter old pewter reads low and it's almost in the negative so most of the time people wouldn't dig it I want you to see it okay now that I pulled it out of the plug now that I pulled it out of the plug it's reading an eight before I pulled it out of the plug it was reading a two all right, I took my glove off so you can see it. See that? It's a little pewter button. Looks tom back. And it could be tom back. But you can see the shank is broken off. This is early 1700s to mid 1700s. And that's history. That's early American history. And you know, we've been here three or four times. And we pulled a lot of stuff out of here. A lot of artifacts. And still, I'm finding buttons. Alright, you guys. What is it? coin is it a button it's a button okay this is a 1600s the early 1700s button this is one that has um right here on the side right there and right over here there are holes in it and there's a name for these kind of buttons that is a very, very early and old button right there. That is an awesome find. 1600s to early 1700s is that button right there. There's holes in it on either side of that shank that would allow the heat, when they made the button, it would allow the heat to escape. These are very old buttons. That's an awesome find. I am tickled to death. That is an awesome, great find. All right, popped the plug, pulled it out. I thought it was a button, but it's not. But it actually is a round ball. This is a round ball. It's early period firmly believe that the gate of the fort stood right here because I found so many bullets and round balls right here before and it just shows you still missing the stuff 
Now why you need to come back out and hit it, go slow. And, uh, you know, we wanted to come back after the rain and the snow had hit the site. So the sounds, you know, I mean, sometimes it, it accentuates the sounds. But you can see how deep it is. I mean, I pulled that plug out a pretty deep hole. They fought to the death. All right, I popped the plug, pulled it out. It's reading an eight. And I don't know if that's going to be pewter. It looks like maybe a utensil piece of a pewter handle. Oh man, this is the first I found so far a pewter. Man, I'm tickled to death about that. That's awesome. I am happy for anything that we save from this site. Tickled to death over that. Pewter. All right, I wanted to show you guys this. It's a square nail, but it's a big spike. And you see how it's rounded on top right there? That's what they call a rosehead nail. And a rosehead nail was hand forged and that was struck with a hammer up there. Those types of nails are really old. But you know, I got to thinking, Chick and I, we've never really found a lot of iron artifacts here. Buckles, horse tack, hooks, loops, even things that you think they would have brought in on a horseback or saddles. None of that. Very little, in fact. And I got to thinking, why? Why is that? This fort was a very, very crude palisade circular fort. And uh, typically when a neighbor sounded the alarm to head to the fort, they didn't bring a whole lot. In fact, they got on the horses and they, and they took off. They left the cows, they left the livestock, the chickens, the goats, everything was left behind. And after they were massacred here on this site, the Indians would have taken their horses with them. So we've never found anything, you know, like you know, bucking boards or wagons or anything like that. So they came in here running for their lives, fleeing for the fort, bringing very little with them. And it was here they all died. I do have a hit down here. This was an old plug that I had dug or Chig had dug before. And I went over it and I had another hit on it. And I popped it out, and it's over in here, and I'm thinking that it's going to be lead or pewter. It was around a 21 or 22. I see it right there. Okay. It's another, it's another lead round ball. Flattened. You know, when they're when they're that flat, they were shot at close range and hit hard. It must have been very desperate times. I can't imagine the desperation they would have felt inside of that, inside of that fort. They fought to the death. There wasn't a sole survivor that left that fort. Of course, there's two sides to every story. But this one... It wasn't as though the Indians were necessarily defending their territory. These Indians here were led by a Frenchman. And the French came down here from Pittsburgh. And these Indians came down here with them from Pittsburgh. So in many ways, the Indians were caught between two warring kingdoms and two warring countries, Britain and France. And unfortunately, they chose the wrong side both times. We had a great day. We'll do the wrap up up there at my truck. I'll show you everything we got. I think we had a good day.
I'm really pleased with all my trash and junk. This is the only horseshoe piece I have found at this site. And uh, it just shows me that they didn't spend a lot of time here. Some square nails I told you I found. There's an interesting kind of tack nail. These are all lead round balls. These are little pistol balls right here. These are pistol balls. These are lead round balls. This is pewter up here. This is all pewter. And uh, these are my buttons here. I got three buttons. This is also pewter. This is a brass fitting I found walking out to the site. These are larger round balls. Here, this is pewter. And these are all wheat scents. And that's a rivet right there. And this is a 1700s era wagon hammer. And this is only the second one I've ever found. And uh, this one's a smaller version of the one that I found. And the one that I found before was in a 1740s era homestead site.